welcome to everybody. I'm Ellie Shore, and I've been doing Art Salon for two and a half years now. And every time is different. Every artist is so different. And the kinds of projects that artists get involved in are so different. And I look for a variety of people who have very different stories to tell. And this is certainly going to be one of them. Subject of national parks is a hugely fascinating subject. And Inga Henson's work in the Everglades looked at people in the national parks, but from very different points of view. Inga is looking at the Seminole Indians who lived on that land long before it was a national park, and what has happened in their lives, and how their lives have interacted both with the park and with the culture around them. Inga was a teacher in Norway and was also an editor of a publishing company that created textbooks for children in schools in Norway and became fascinated with painting and with art and for the last 15 years has been a professional artist full time and has used her painting to a large degree to work outdoors, plein air painting. And this is a whole new project for her in working not just with the out of doors and the feeling of nature, but the people who are living in it. So Inga Henson. Thank you, Elle, for inviting me to uh do this talk, and I realized when I was doing this that it was really good to have this as an opportunity to go through everything again, because I have had all these uh, thoughts and all these ideas and all this thinking, and um, before the show I was so busy of putting everything together, so I was working from morning to evening with just practical things. And now I, I got the opportunity to see, why am I doing this? What I want to do is to take you through my journey with this project. So I will show you a few paintings which I've done in the studio in Norway. And um, I will show you some snapshots of the people and places. And I'm not a photographer. So these are snapshots which I use for inspiration. I also put in some historical facts, but I'm not a historian and I am not a politician and I don't want to moralize and I don't want to educate. I just want to make art of a fascinating history and people. So that has been what I'm doing. So how did this interest for the Seminole people start? Some of you remember him, it's Rob Roy. And he was a model in a workshop in Naples, which quite a few of us went with Graham Nixon for a week. And uh, this happened. I had made a little explanation first. It was in Naples, Florida when it all started. The Indian was sitting, legs crossed, proud, long, shiny black hair to his waist a small cow's hide with a few items laying in front of him. And I asked him, what are these objects? They are my treasures. This feather came to me. This cup was given to me. And this little tool belonged to my father and is the only thing I've left from him. These are so precious to me. And he was sitting there and he was making one of these small uh, Indian things and he said, I'm making a gift for Graham. And the way he spoke, this feather came to me, the cup was given to me, and this little tool belonged to my father. It touched me. And I felt that he had something that I, as a Norwegian, didn't have. So I became curious. I wondered, is it a kind of uh, a culture difference or is it just a language difference? I got curious and I wanted to know a little bit more about the natives. And I'm using Native Americans and Indians because um, I talked to um, one of the uh, natives at the um, Brighton Reservation. He said we use both. 
So both is politically correct, she said, even if it is politically correct to say Native Americans. So if I do mix them, it's okay. <laughs> What I started to think, what had happened to the natives over the years? Did they ever become part of the American dream, or didn't they want to? So I found out I did know nothing about the subject and started to search for information. And the information I got and the people I talked to made me want to explore this through my art, or to conceptualize the idea and see what it would lead to. But meanwhile, I was painting in the Everglades at the Grassy Waters, which are one of my favorite places to paint here. But one day, I had the urge to paint bigger. And Rob Roy was painted on one of my canvases from the workshop. So I looked at him and I thought, well, he doesn't look so bad. So I could paint him back into the forest where he once came from. I painted the Everglades around him. But then April came, and it was time to go home. So I went walking in one of the forests around our home. And these trees here, they said, you have to paint us. Look at them. They look like they are dancing. It's close to spring. So I painted them. I'll give you a few examples of pictures which I've done at home. This is winter, January, outside my studio. It's birches, and they are covered of white snow. And this is my perception of the white snow. And the ocean, with all that energy. And this little girl. So the next thing, my project, was to see how nature draws. And most of them are done here, and a few of them are done in the um, forest in Norway. That project ended up in uh, a show in uh, Oslo City Hall. And uh, three of the um, large paintings are in the show here. And you see I've done a few books, sculptures as well. And the next one here, last year, it was 100 years ago since the Norwegian were allowed to vote in Norway. And I was invited to um, be in a show there with that subject. I don't have a picture of the whole show. I just brought a few things. But you all know the uh, Nike. And at that time, she was standing in the basement in the National Gallery in Oslo. So I went down there and I painted her. And I thought she would have a red dress. And also this one, you know, of Delacroix, Liberty Leading the People. And I see why I've been the liberation, the freedom. I'll come back to that later. So I did this little wall here. It is pictures cut from news magazines, and it's um, subjects which are concerned with women. But then in 2013, I received a grant in Norway. I applied to get the grant in order to go f into the uh, Native American subject again. So I did get the grant. It was very little money, but it was an inspiration to go on doing it. So I decided I wanted to focus on the Seminola and to see how they managed to give the uh, forefathers' culture to the new generation. So what I did was to, I read books, I listened to lectures, I talked to people, I visited reservations, I went to museums, I read their newspaper. They have their own newspaper, which is called the Seminole Tribune. And um, I learned about the Everglades' importance in the ecosystem. So I learned about their education, their culture, and I drew and I painted in order to gain a deeper understanding. So as I said in the beginning, I'm not a historian, but I thought I'll give you some historical background. Since 1770, Florida Indians were known as Seminoles, and they got the name from the Spanish. And they thought of themselves as Yatsi Minoli, or free people. And they immigrated from Georgia and Alabama, and 
there was a conflict with Europeans and other tribes. The Trail of Tears, that was the Indian Removal Act in 1830. So I did a few uh, historical paintings. So the one at the left, that is a painting, an old painting, which I have redone. And there is a little text there, the past is still present. And the one on the top at the right side, there is a text, I was on my way back home, comma, but. So you can see the Indians there, they had to fight. And the one in the, at the right corner there is an old photo of a family. And the text is, what about our children? Will they only know this beauty from some faded album? So they call themselves the unconquered people. And also on the newspaper, it says the Seminole Tribune, the unconquered people. The text here, if the trees could speak. These are made up in grassy waters. These are from Riverbend. And I learned that Riverbend has been an important part in the battle with the um, US Army and the Seminoles. And the Strangler fig tree, for me, is it's embracing the mother tree. And the end, it kills it. And when you look at the one at the right side, I see this, uh, the tree there. It is so strong and it's so proud and it's stretching itself up there. And you have the Spanish moss in the background there. So this is the scenery I painted, and it's my perception of it. So I see a lot of colors. But then I needed to meet some people. I've been painting nature, so I needed to see some people. So I hit the road to reservations. And Florida is flat. And the road is just straight. And you see there are not in enough space at the right side here. So that made me want to paint that painting. It's painted on um, unprimed canvas. I did that on purpose because of my subject. So you can look at it in there. These are a map of the reservations, and Brighton is in the middle. I've been um, visiting Brighton up at uh, north of Lake Okeechobee, and also Big Cypress and Hollywood down in Fort Lauderdale. So these are people I met, and the first one I met was Diane. She was working at the cultural center. She was a mother, a grandmother, a widow last winter. She had four kids and four daughters. And this little girl there, she was six years old. And she was one of seven kids. And they lost their mother last winter. So Diane took in two of them. Her sister took two. And she said, we managed to give them a home within the clan. And the clan is the family. And I asked her, what does it mean to you to be a Seminole? And she, she thought for a moment, and she said, well, to be a Seminole, I am just me. So they put a dress on that little girl. They had these colorful dresses. So I did a uh, uh, painting at the left side is uh, from the school in Brighton, where they painted these um, beautiful children. And I also took a close-up of the patchwork. Because for me, that is a picture of their history, their colorful life, and in a way, the whole of Florida. Because, I mean, Florida has a very colorful history. So here I was in Pemayeta and Mahaga, or the Bichir Our Way school. So these kids here, they are painting to me. This is me. And it's a collage wall out in the exhibition. 
So here are some more kids. The princesses at the left and the normal uh, Halloween kids at the right. And you all know that they uh, have these casinos. And uh, the one at the right is the first tobacco shop. And of course, the casinos and, and the, the tobacco has made them rich. And that enables them to canalize the um, money back to their own. So they put it into education, to the health system, and to uh, the Everglades, and to cater for the elder. And also they give an allowance to every seminal each month. And the guy in um, the down at the left corner, I met him at the festival, and we talked, and he said, I'm going to Norway with uh, buffaloes. And I said, to Norway with buffaloes? Yes. And he gave me the name of the farmer. And uh, he went to Norway with buffaloes. <laughs> and I just took a picture of the artwork on that buffalo's head. So in the former days, the dances were mainly spiritual, and they used it uh, as um, religious. But today, they um, go around to festivals, and they have even dance competitions. But the colors are beautiful. And I look at this uh, in the left corner there, the back of this uh, guy here. It looks like this, uh, the palmetto. <laughs> they are preserving Riverbend. The one at the left, he is an author, and he uh, writes books about the battlefield. And um, they introduced me to the wars there, and we have the uh, battlefield on our doorstep here in Florida. It's up in Jupiter. These are the kids' work. And what I did was that the kids at Brighton, they are writing letters to a school class in Norway. So I presented my visit to the school to the class in Norway, and then I came back with the letters to the class in Brighton, and I presented something from Norway there, and the kids write letters to each other. So this is uh, what I've done here with the, like the social realism, what I call it. It's uh, pictures I took from the newspaper, and the ones underneath is painted on paper in oil. So my aim was to see the uh, culture thing in these paintings. This one here is kind of just a curiosity, I think. But it was an article in the newspaper where the elders, they uh, wrote an article about uh, to take care of the, the land and, uh, and, and the nature. But what I thought was quite interesting was the titles here that in our modern world, you have people with these titles. Chief Arvo Looking Horse is a 19th generation keeper of the sacred white buffalo calf pipe and spiritual leader of the great Sioux nation. And the next one, Bobby C. Billy is clan leader and spiritual leader for the council of the original Mikosuke Simanoli nation aboriginal peoples. And the last one, Faith Spotted Eagle is Tonkin Inajin Vin Brave Heart Society Grandmother, Headswoman, N. E. Hank Tonvan Treaty Council, E. Hank Tovan Dakota from the Oseti Sakovin Seven Council Fires. To have these titles today, I thought that was fairly fascinating. And uh, they have a saying if the land dies, so will the Seminoles. And that guy at the right side, he was sitting in one of the reservations, and he was old, and he was holding his uh, hand on the stick. And to me, it was just like he was watching whatever was going on. So I made that sculpture inspired by him. And to me, it's, it's a form. And in this collage, I gathered everything. There is history. There is nature, and there is the modern world. So you see that the um, trail of tears up here, and I thought the connection here was quite interesting, because this is a Smith family with the cattle. 
and I made another one. And up here is the Calusas. And I learned that the Native Americans came from Siberia 15,000 years ago. And when I looked at the people and their features, and you know, we have the Sami people up north in Norway, and they have the same features, and they have also the colorful dresses. So whether there is a connection, that has to be my next project. <laughs> and, and this mount here was from Belglade, and Belglade was a center in those days. And they also told me that this architecture was highly, they compared it with the uh, Egyptian pyramids. And also this tree here, I think, for me is important because it sucks the life through the water, which is very important to the Everglades. So you can see where I've been. I've been out there in the back of Florida, and also with that freedom thinking of the Seminoles. And you probably remember Bing Crosby, don't fence me in, let me ride, let me be free. So I have the song in there as well, beside that painting. Now I'm back to the class, because uh, the kids had also making some um, poems, and I've just taken one verse from each of them. I am Justina who loves art. I wonder how beautiful they are. I hear its meaning. I see its meaning. I want to draw all day. I am Justina who loves art. And I am Alex, who loves to play sports. I wonder if I'll make the team. I hear the crack of the baseball. I see the ball. I want to play. I am Alex, who loves to play sports. And I am Dante, who loves Slim Jims. I wonder if people hate Slim Jims. I hear people eating Slim Jims. I see Slim Jims in stores. I want to buy a Slim Jim. I am a Slim Jim. To me, this is interesting because I see, well, art, and then the sports, competition, and the humor in these kids. So these are the future, and they are curious. They want to learn. In my project, I have met conscious leaders. I have met a good teachers. I have met caring parents, a modern society, and people being proud of their heritage. And the thing that was interesting in the school was that they divided the school in two separate areas. So they had one for the academic teaching and one for the cultural teaching. And they paid the teachers well, so they had very good teachers. Um, every student had equipment. They had their own laptop. There were only 10 in a class and two teachers per class. And for the cultural part, they um, used the um, older people. So they taught them uh, the language, which was Creek. So they had English as the first language, as the Creek as uh, the second language. So throughout the whole project, I've been asked the question, why did I do this? And I also asked myself, why did I do this? And uh, today, I found my answer is, besides this being a fascinating story, it is also about survival, about courage, and love, and a desire to solve life's mysteries. That has been my interest. So I finish with Shona Bish, which is thank you in Greek. Thank you.